In this video, I'm going to show you how to do this really awesome digital zoom effect inside of Adobe Premiere Pro. So let's get into it. So as you can see, we're inside of Adobe Premiere Pro and we've got two video clips on the timeline. And as you can see, I've got one wide and one close up. And in the wide and the close up, I'm doing the exact same action. And this is really important because you want to add the cut or the transition at the point where the same action is occurring. So in order to make this cut, I'm just going to cut as that hand starts to come up. So as it starts to come up into frame, I'll make the cut into the close up on that same action. And that's gonna make that cut really seamless. So it's really important that when you're doing this, that you have that same action in the frame. And it's also really important that the lighting in the close up and the wide is the same. And it's also really important if the background is the same as well. It doesn't have to be, but it's a little bit more jarring if the background does change. So as you can see, this is the same environment, the same lighting. The only difference is the fact that it's on a wide in the first shot and a close up in the second shot. So in order to do this effect, we just want to go through to the point where the arm comes up. So around here, press C on the keyboard to load the razor tool and make a cut there. Then we'll delete the second half of that first video. Then we'll scroll through to that same point on the second video. So around here, again, we'll make that cut and delete the first part. And now when we play this back, you can see that cuts really smoothly. So this means when we add that zoom in for the transition, it's going to feel really nice and seamless. So in order to do that, you first just want to bring the zoom two layer up onto video layer two. And we're just going to bring it back maybe just a few frames. And then you want to hover roughly in between there. So towards the end of the first clip, and we're just going to pull the opacity of zoom two all the way down to around 50, 40 percent. Then we're just going to go back on ourselves a little bit and create a brand new keyframe on position and scale on video layer one. Then we'll go back to that previous point and we're just going to increase the scale and the position of our wide shot. And we want to try and match the wide to the close up. So you want to try and get these as close as possible. So as you can see, I need to go in a little bit more. Look at the environment around you so you can see these light switches aren't matching up. So we'd have to pull this over and pull this up again. And that now looks a little bit better, although I th still think the scale is off a little bit. So I'm just going to make a few more adjustments. And there you go, that's roughly where it needs to be. So at this moment in time, I'm just going to pull zoom two back to where it was. And now when we play this back, you can see that now looks really cool. But as you can see, the opacity is still set to 40 something percent on the second video layer. So I'm gonna pull that back up to 100 and let's play this back. That looks good, but the problem is the zoom wasn't quick enough and we really saw that cut between the first clip and the second clip now. So in order to fix that, we first just want to make sure that these last set of keyframes on the first video clip are at the very end. And then we want to pull the first set of keyframes over there. As you can see, that's now looking a lot better, although you could argue that it's actually a little bit too aggressive now. So I'm just going to increase that gap slightly. And that is now looking better, but the problem is it just goes straight into that close up. There's no ricochet or camera bounce or anything. And if you were zooming in on your camera lens, there'd be a little bit of a wobble as it's coming back into position. So I'm just going to take this back. And then as we come into this second clip, I'm just going to create a brand new keyframe on scale and position at the beginning. We'll go five or six keyframes to the right and increase the scale up and just pull the position up. Then we're just going to go back on ourselves. And we're just going to pull that back down to 100% and the position can come back to where it was before. So let's see how this looks. That does look a lot better with that bounce, but the problem is it's just too slow. So again, we need to decrease the gap between all of these keyframes. So pull those second keyframes in and then we'll pull those last keyframes in as well. Let's see how this looks. Instantly a lot better. Although at the moment, none of these keyframes, none of this animation really has character at the moment. And that's because we're using linear keyframes. So I'm just going to select zoom to the video on video layer two. We'll highlight the position and scale keyframes to highlight all of them. Right click on one of them, go to temporal interpolation and select ease in. And then we'll do the same on the first video. So we'll select those keyframes, right click, temporal interpolation and ease in. Now let's play this back. You can see that does look better. 
Before I carry on with the rest of the video, I first just want to take a quick break to talk about the Brooker Films courses. If you're enjoying these shorter videos that I post to YouTube, then I think you'll love the longer form content that I post on Skillshare. For example, one of the courses that I have on Skillshare is a three hour plus introduction to Premiere Pro. And this course covers everything from import settings to importing your footage, to masking, to multicam editing, to green screen. There's so much in that course and I'm able to get more detailed and more thorough in this course. So if you're new to Premiere Pro, if you're just looking for some up-to-date advice on how to use Premiere, then this course is for you. So click the link in the description below to check out that Premiere Pro course. So let's play this back from the very beginning and see where we are at. So I come into frame, thumb comes up and then we go into that transition. The problem is though, we are seeing this exposure difference here. So the exposure in this first clip is slightly lighter than the exposure in the second clip. And that's because when I filmed this, I was using a photography lens. So as I zoomed in, my aperture actually changed, which therefore decreased the brightness of the shot. So in order for these to match, I would want to adjust the exposure of these two shots to make that more seamless. So as you can see, there's just a bit of a decrease in the brightness. So I'm going to go into effects, search for levels. We're going to drop levels onto video layer one and roughly at the same time as these keyframes on position and scale. We'll go into RGB gamma and create a brand new keyframe on the stopwatch icon. Then we'll scroll through to the end and come back on ourselves by one frame and we'll just pull that down. Then we're just gonna go over one keyframe, make sure that matches. It still needs to come down some more, so we'll pull that down again. And that's now looking better, although as you can see, this first clip is a bit more red than the second clip. So again, I'm just going to go back to that first position. We'll go red gamma, brand new keyframe on the stopwatch. We'll go to the end again, come back on ourselves by one keyframe and just pull that down just a little bit. And now that's matching a little better. Although I'd argue that this is now actually a little too dark. So I'm going to pull that gamma up just a touch. And there you go, that now feels a lot better. So let's play this back, see what we're working with. There we go. So that's instantly a million times better. Of course though, there is one more trick that we can do to make this really look seamless and that is to add some fake motion blur. So we're just gonna go in to our project tab. We'll right click or alternatively, you can go to the new item button and we'll scroll up to adjustment layer. You just want to press OK on this new adjustment layer and drag that between clip one and clip two. Now we'll go roughly in the middle of that movement. So about here, we'll go into effects and we're going to search for blur. Then in here, you can see you've got Gaussian blur, you've got directional blur. Select any one of these. I'm gonna go for a Gaussian blur in this example. And as you can see, if we increase the blurriness up, then the end of the frame gets this horrible vignette. So if we select the repeat edge pixels button, that fixes that problem for us. So we'll go through to the start of the movement. So that was around here. Brand new keyframe and blurriness at zero. We'll scroll through to the end and again, zero. Then we'll go halfway through that movement and we'll increase that blurriness up just a touch. So we'll go up to around 30 or 40. That does look good, but the problem is I just think it takes a little bit too long to settle. So we'll decrease the gap there. And now that looks better, but again, I'm just gonna increase that amount of blurriness on that second keyframe. That's a bit too much. So let's go for something a bit less, maybe 45. And that does look better. Alternatively though, you could do this with directional blur as well. So if we turn Gaussian blur off, and we increase the blur length on directional blur. You can see you can actually change the direction that this is going to move in. The only problem with directional blur though is you do get this vignetting on the outside of the video. So in order to fix that, you might just have to nest everything and then scale the nested sequence up just a little bit to get rid of that. But the good thing is with the direction of blur is it is a little bit closer to motion blur. Now, alternatively, you can actually just go into effects and presets, search for transform, 
drop transform onto your clip and then you can adjust the position and the scale this way and then you can uncheck use composition shutter speed and increase the shutter angle to add natural motion blur into the frame but the problem is when I've used this plugin in previous tutorials some users have said that it actually messes up the timing of the effect so you don't have to do transform you can do it the other way or you could try the transform option if you wanted an easier way to handle motion blur but there you go let's just check this back one more time there we go. We've got this really awesome super zoom crash zoom effect inside of Adobe Premiere Pro. So thank you ever so much for watching this video. I really do appreciate your support and hopefully I will see you in the next video. See you there.